Every other Saturday night, my family gets together, we go out to dinner, we come back, we sit around the dining room table, and we play games all night long. We're chucking dice, playing cards, going wild. I love it. It's one of my favorite game nights. So I want to share with you today five more games that my family just loves to play. Skull King. One of the staple game types my family loves to play are trick-taking games. My in-laws absolutely love them. They're like one of their favorite types of card games. And Skull King is one that I absolutely love because it's your standard trick-taking game with fantastic twists. Now, it's your standard one, right? You have a hand of cards, you lead a trick, everybody has to go around the table, play a card following suit. The highest value card takes a trick. Standard trick taking. Now, you're gonna play over 10 rounds and each round is one additional card in your hand, right? So first round is gonna be one card. You know, there's only gonna be one trick in a round. All the way up to the 10th round, there's gonna be 10 cards in your hand playing 10 tricks. Now, at the beginning of each round, you must predict how many tricks you're gonna take in this round. So you gotta be looking at your hand. You gotta be seeing what cards you have and see, looking around and thinking about what could everybody else have. And you're trying to deduce how many tricks you're likely to take during this round. And if you guess the right number, man, you get Boku points. If you don't guess the right number, you lose some points. So it's so much fun. And of course, there's the Trump suit. The pirates are all the Trump suits. And of course you have the Skull King, which is the super Trump. And if you add the little ex mini expansion in there, you get mermaids, which Trump the Skull King, but nothing else. It's such a neat concept. I love that this game, all trick-taking games have strategy in them. And there's a lot of tactics and strategy to how you play. You gotta look at the cards, you gotta figure out the odds of how you're gonna take these tricks and whatever, and when you play those cards. Well, this one has all of that, plus you have to do it at the beginning of the round. You have to decide what your whole plan is for the round, and then say, yep, I'm gonna take three, three out of eight tricks this turn. And boy, is it difficult to do that. It's almost impossible to get it exactly right, but when you do, your mind explodes. It's so much fun to get it right, to say, like, I'm gonna take three tricks, and bam, at the end of the round, you took three tricks. Man, this game is terrific. I highly recommend that if you haven't played Skull King, you go out there, find it, and you play it, you're gonna like it. Strike. Now, I gotta say, this game is pretty stupid. There isn't anything to it. It's a dice game. The theme of the original Strike was, there's a gladiator arena, and your dice are gladiators. And you throw those dice in there, and see what happens. There's no strategy to this game whatsoever at all, but damn, I love this game. Now, I don't actually have the version of Strike called Strike. I have the version called Impact, which has a different theme on it. It is space with elements. So the dice actually look cooler than numbers and Xs, but the, the, the arena that you get isn't as big and I don't like it as much as the original Strike. Okay, so the dice have one through five on them and they have an X. On your turn, you come up, you throw one dice into the arena. If the die you throw in there matches any of the dice that are already in the arena, you take those out, your turn's over, you pass the arena on to the next person. If you don't match any of the others, you gotta roll another die. If you don't match, you gotta roll another die. If you ever roll the X, that die goes out of the game. Or if the die you throw in there bounces out onto the table, that goes out of the game too. The goal of this game is to be the last player with dice. If you run out of dice, you're out of the game. Now this game is super simple, super, super simple. There's nothing to it. There's no strategy. There's no tactics. There's no best way to play this game. It's all rolling dice and seeing what happens and hoping that you roll doubles of things that are in there. And I gotta say, I adore this game. I think it's fantastic. And there's one other little rule in there that I didn't mention. If you ever get the arena sent over to you and there's no dice in it at all, you gotta throw all your dice in at one time and pick out the doubles and pick out the Xs. And that could be completely devastating to you, but it's so much fun. It's like this epic moment that doesn't happen very often in the game, but when it does, everybody's like, oh no, this is going, you gotta throw all your dice in there. And then what happens is which everybody just laughs and has a great time. So this game is such a simple game that any age kid can play this game. But as an adult, I have a blast playing it anyway. It's just so goofy. We always open the night with it. Uh, it's so simple. You don't have to think. I don't have to teach any rules to anybody. We're just like, all right, let's do some strike. Roll it in. Whoosh. We start rolling dice and I have a great time. The original theme of gladiators fighting in an arena is much better than the theme of, I don't know, elements in space or something. Uh, but this game is just fun. It's just a silly, fun dice rolling game. I recommend checking it out. My family digs it. Silver and gold. 
Now this one's a brand new one that I only got about a couple of months ago and it was an immediate hit with my family. This one's basically a roll and write game without the dice. You draw cards instead of rolling dice. Uh, the way it works is everybody has two island cards in front of them with a little shape on them with a grid. And each one of them has a point value assigned to them. Whenever a card is drawn, there's a Tetris piece on it. And now everybody's got to take that Tetris piece and draw it onto their island. You're trying to fill up the entire island with X's. Now this is like a whiteboard marker on your cards and they wipe off real well. They're like coded or something. Uh, so it's really cool. You're marking down all your islands. You're trying to complete them, move them off the side, get a new island. You're trying to complete as many as possible. And there's a bunch of other scoring mechanisms too. You're collecting gold coins. Gold coins score in a certain way. Palm trees score in a certain way. There's a lot of little rules like that going on with it. But the basics are Tetris on your island score those points and then set collection of different uh, icons of different types of islands that score you points at the end as well. I love this game. It's a really cool little spatial relations puzzle game. What are the odds that the certain uh, shapes are going to come up in the deck? You use all but one card in the deck every single time. So you're waiting for the right shape to come up and maybe that shape won't come up because it's the one that's left out this round. Uh, what a really neat game. I enjoy it so much and I enjoy the fact that you're writing on the cards and you're looking around, you're trying to get the coins before the other people get the coins because if you get them first, you get the most points. Man, I love this game. This is a really clever game, really cool little production, fun little theme of treasure hunting and marking off islands, putting X's on your island maps. I really like it. Highly recommend checking out Silver and Gold. Cockroach Poker. Man, this is the most unique game on this list. And I, I gotta tell you, this is one of the games that we laugh the most when we're playing. Cockroach Poker is all about lying and bluffing. Uh, there's a big deck of cards that have a bunch of vile creatures on them. There's frogs and bats and cockroaches, stink bugs, all different stuff like that. You get a big hand of those cards. And on your turn, you play one face down to the table, you point at somebody around the table and say, that card is a cockroach. And their job is to decide if you're lying or telling the truth. They can call you on the bluff or they can say, yeah, I think it's a cockroach as well. You flip it over. If the player who played it is lying, they get to keep the card. They have to put it in front of them. If the person guessing was wrong, they got to take the card. The goal is that the game will end when somebody has four of the same animal in front of them, four frogs in front of them, or four rats in front of them or whatever. That person loses the game, which I also think is a hilarious thing because there are, if you're playing four players, there's three winners and one loser, and that's hilarious. Man, this game is just all about lying and bluffing. It's all it is. And it is so fun because you think at the beginning of the game, boy, there's no gonna be no strategy to this game whatsoever. There's nothing. It's just me lying and they're just 50-50 guessing. Yes, that's true, kind of, at the beginning. You have to get a vibe. But once you play this game so long with the same people, you start to get into their minds. You know what they're thinking. Sometimes sometimes you have this run of just guessing every single time right against a certain player, and everybody's laughing around the table, and they're like, they got your number, and they're laughing so hard. And the fact that there's only one loser at the end of the game is another kind of point to laugh about at the end of the game. It's just frivolous, but fun. And there is some strategy, because as the game progresses, you know how many of each one of those cards are in the deck. Of course, there's eight of each animal in the deck. So if you're looking around the table, you can see, oh, there's seven rats out right now. She just said rat. Is she lying to me? Because there's only one rat out of all these cards that are still available. Does she have that one rat? Does she know that I know that there's only one rat? So she's telling the truth, making me think that she's lying. It's all about this reverse psychology garbage that never actually does anything for you. Like, I know she knows that I know, but I know this, and she knows that I know that. That's how the game works. Just a, a blast to play this game. I love cockroach poker. If you want to play an, an awesome party game, this is a good one for me to play when you're drinking. This is even fun to play with your kids. Everybody loves cockroach poker that I've ever introduced this game to. Check it out, cockroach poker. Las Vegas. Now I've saved my very favorite of these five for the last. Las Vegas is a beautiful game design. Now this one is an area majority dice rolling game with a casino theme to it. So there's six casinos out. Each one of those casinos has a number of money cards dealt to it. And it's like 50,000, 60,000, up to 90,000 of these cards. Now on your turn, you have a whole bunch of dice, you roll them all and you separate them out into the different numbers. So you might've rolled three sixes and two twos and one one. 
right? Now you have to at least place one of those numbers on the casino out on the table, right? So you can take all three of those sixes, put them on the six. You can take that one, one and put that on the one casino or the twos on the two casino, but you have to at least place one of those piles of dice. And you're trying to get the most dice onto the casinos because at the end of the round, the person with the most dice gets the highest valued card that's there. That's the game right there. It is such a wonderful game. Man, I gotta tell you, there's the intricacies of playing this game are fantastic. It's dealing with probabilities. It's dealing with, uh, it, it is dealing with the randomness, but it's also dealing with the psychology of the other players. Are they gonna put theirs there? Are they gonna put them there? Are you gonna go for the highest valued money card that's out on the table, which is gonna be hotly contested? Are you gonna go for second place uh, on some of them if there's two cards there? Are you gonna go for all the smallest values across multiple casinos because they're not really contested all that much. You can get a bunch of things. You're not gonna get as much money but you get a bunch of money cards. There's just so many ways to go about playing this game and it is a blast every single time. It's every time it's like, there's always that hotly contested casino and everybody's piling dice on it. And sometimes it's just like a whole spread of different ones and people are trying to block each other out. Cause if you tie for majorities in the, uh, in the different casinos, those people don't get it at all. It falls down to the next level down, which is great because sometimes the person with the most money, you're trying to block them out at least one of those casinos so they don't get any more money. Love this game. Now I gotta say, I have a copy called Casino Royale that was just released this year. And I gotta tell you, it stinks. It sucks. I don't like it at all. Uh, it's the same game. I'll play it. It's just fine. But the production is ridiculous. Things MSRP $50 when you get the old version on Amazon for $20. And it's a better production. Better, I'm telling you. In this new one, it's got all this plastic stuff with bowls and all this junk. I don't need any of that crap. I just want the, the, the casino cards, the money cards, and the dice. Now, I will say the Casino Royale version has the expansion, which adds some like special abilities for the different casinos. Those are fun. It's a neat little diversion from the original game, but the original game is better without them. Buy this old one as $20. It's an absolutely amazing game, and you'll get exactly what you need. You'll spend more than half the price on it, too. So, wonderful game. Las Vegas, one of the best ever. All right, gang, well, that is five more games my family loves to play, and I could tell you that I could do these lists till the day I die because we're always playing new games, we're playing old games, we're coming back to games all the time, tons of games of this ilk, and I could keep listening for the rest of my life because we love to play games. And I hope this list helped you find some games that you could play with your family as well. And until next time, have a good one, everybody. Thanks so much, everybody. If you've enjoyed this video, please do us a giant favor by subscribing to the channel and clicking that wacky bell icon. If you're into board games, miniatures games, role-playing games, we have a bunch of audio podcasts you might enjoy. You can find those at thesecretcabal.com or on iTunes and Stitcher.